joining us today for the Paid Media Emerging Ad Platforms webinar. We'll be talking through today a few of the areas that we think are going to be major emerging ad platforms in 2022. And so I'm Carrie Schroeder, and I'm a paid media specialist here at Anvil. And I am presenting today with my colleague, Brandon Elston, who's also a paid media specialist here. And I think Brandon's going to get us kicked off. Terrific. Thank you, Carrie. All right. So starting off here, uh, this is a brief overview of what we're going to be covering today. Uh, starting off, we're going to be looking at the three different, a couple different platforms being programmatic, retail, uh, esports, and apps. We're going to be going through some of the targeting options and the benefits of running those. Uh, we also will have a slide on where to access those. We'll wrap it up uh, with a summary and Q&A. Um, so feel free to drop any questions you guys have in the chat. We'll get those in the end, and we'll also be sending out a recording afterwards. So if there's any slides you want to look back over uh, or rehear something, uh, that will be available to you as well. Perfect. So starting off here, uh, just a brief overview of each of the different platforms we're going to be talking about today. We're going to start off with programmatic. Um, so programmatic is a really great um, advertising tool to open up uh, your reach and audience. Um, it's also really great for industries that are a little more heavily regulated, uh, finance and housing being a couple of examples. So we'll be going through that. Uh, retail advertising platforms such as Amazon, Walmart, and Target have been on the rise right lately. So we want to cover those as well um, and some of the benefits of those in using their first party data. And then we'll be covering esports and in-app advertising app opportunities. So being able to get in front of people as they're playing their favorite games online, uh, as well as on their mobile devices as they're going through um, stopping in the middle of those games and having that uh, focus in on those ads. Perfect. So starting off here with programmatic. Programmatic advertising is using uh, automation normally through a DSP or demand side platform to buy and sell digital media. So this can be anything from display ads, audio, CTV, anything like that. Um, and so through a DSP, a demand side platform, uh, advertiser can place a bid for a placement on a publisher's website um, and then serve those. And then the publisher will supply um, those placements with the SSP or a supply side platform. Um, and then they sync up in real time and, and conduct that auction. So um, it's really great when you're using programmatic because you can select your audiences. And then um, through the DSP, it'll go through and automatically select the placements that best fit in with those audiences and show your ad in real time. You're not having to go through and say, I want to spend this amount on this placement or this amount on another. It automatically goes through and picks all that for you. Um, if this sounds familiar, if DSP or SSP isn't familiar to you, a great example of this is Google Display Ads. Uh, Google Display Ads are technically a demand side platform uh, where SSP would be like the AdSense side where uh, publishers are putting that on their website to show that inventory. So it might give you a little bit better familiarity, um, but we'll go through some of the benefits of actually using programmatic over that. Um, and I mentioned below here, it says, well, advertisers uh, have the option working with the, directly with the DSP. Uh, most people go through um, and purchase programmatic advertising through a vendor, um, just because DSPs can be pretty complex in setting those up and getting them synced up. And vendors usually offer multiple DSPs, uh, which can get you the best reach serving on multiple um, ad bidding platforms and give you the best results. So here's some of the benefits of using programmatic advertising. Uh, the first one being greater control. Uh, programmatic advertising has really great uh, transparency when it comes to a lot of the KPIs and performance year campaigns, where the ad showed up, the viewability of those ads. So um, how much of your ad was viewable to the users and a lot more in-depth information than just standard display or other types of advertising out there. So that's one of the benefits. The other one is going to be better targeting. Um, an impression, or impression efficiency. Um, so uh, programmatic vendors often use third-party audiences and that opens up a window into a lot of different data layers that are accessible there. Um, so things like mobile device IDs through geo-targeting if you wanna target a very specific area. So even further down than Zip, you can go down to certain store locations or popular event venues. Uh, behavioral targeting, uh, so typically, uh, what people typically look at, you know, as they're browsing online, as well as purchase propensity targeting. So you can see if they're frequently uh, buying certain products, you can target people with that as well. 
And this is especially useful, especially with their access to third-party audiences with Google sunsetting third-party data coming in 2023. These platforms have access to third-party data outside of, um, you know, the kind of the normal range of third-party data uh, that will be accessible even with that sunset. Absolutely. Um, the other benefit of programmatic advertising is access to regulated markets. So as I mentioned briefly in the overview, um, since programmatic vendors um, partner through independent vendors to, to show their ads, a lot of times it gives you access to advertise kind of more restricted uh, categories on certain other platforms. So housing, financial services, social issues, um, cannabis, a lot of those kind of taboo markets, if you will, um, aren't as regulated on programmatic, so you can still advertise through those venues. And a lot of social networks in particular have put restrictions on targeting for housing and financial. And so even though they're not necessarily a taboo market per se, they are somewhat restricted in some areas as far as some mm -hmm. of the demographic targeting. So this just kind of opens that up in ways that you're not able to access otherwise. Yes, absolutely. Um, and then the final note here is a larger reach. Um, so the benefit of programmatic is you don't have to be signed up or be using a certain platform to be shown ads. Programmatic ads have the ability to show across the web, whether that be certain websites or apps. Um, and so it can really reach a large amount of people. And the benefit of that is you can get really granular with your advertising. So you're not necessarily restricted, whereas other platforms, um, there may be a small audience on there. And then once you add that layering of targeting, uh, you're really left with just a handful of people people. Programmatic is really great because you can layer on those targeting options and get really granular with their targeting and reach the right people with the right message at the right time. Uh, so that's a really great benefit to using programmatic. All right. And I'm going to talk about some of the retail platforms that are available. In the past year or so, these have become especially valuable and becoming more and more used. The three main ones that we've seen in today's market are Walmart, Target, and Best Buy. Those have the most robust platforms currently, and there are some others that are following close behind. And some of the, these have some pretty big advantages, especially over a platform like Amazon. So for example, you'll have a lot less overall competition, especially for sellers who are focused on kind of a specialized category, product category. You don't have to worry about a ton of low quality competitors um, kind of trying to come in and undercut that you kind of would experience on an Amazon platform. So that's one big advantage. Another one is that sellers within these marketplaces have access to all the features and tools free of charge. There's no monthly setup fees. You only get charged um, kind of on a category wise commission fee. So, you know, essentially what you're paying to run the ads and there's no monthly setup or maintenance fees. So very inexpensive, no minimum spends and no, you know, monthly just access fee or anything like that. So you can start and stop your ads as you, as you please. And as they're relevant, another one of these, another uh, benefit to running on these is that with Amazon, you have to be able to sell your products on Amazon in order to run ads on their platform. With these platforms, you can run ads for your products and they don't necessarily have to be sold in the store that you're, whose ad platform it is. So that's another benefit is you can kind of get your ad out there in front of these buyers who might be looking at something similar on one of these other websites or, you know, just if, if it's a product that that company doesn't sell, it kind of gets in front of an audience that you may not have tapped into otherwise. And if a seller matches a website affiliate's product category, you can access a, a list of products on both their company's website as well as their affiliates, kind of expanding that customer reach. So if you do sell your product in their stores or could sell your product in their stores and can get the product in there, then they have an access to a list of product, you know, the list that you can kind of get in front of other places as well that aren't readily available to all areas. And then just touching quickly on app advertising. So app advertising can take a few different forms. You can advertise the app um, itself within the app store. So you can promote people, prompt people to download your app, purchase your app, or encourage in-app purchases. So it's as if, you know, you'd see an ad that pops up and it'll say, you know, download the app, things like that. 
And then you can also advertise within the apps to promote your product or service. So it, that would be like what you would see when you're playing a game and the game stops for a second to show you an ad. And then you can also use display advertising to target mobile app placements. So you can create a display ad placement in a certain size that is used on mobile devices. And those are the little ads that you'll see pop up at the bottom of your screen when you're in an app and you know, like something pops up at the bottom or sometimes on the top. And it's just a quick little display kind of banner ad. And uh, those are often, however, clicked on sometimes accidentally. And so you have to be very targeted and very careful with those types of app placements, just because a lot of times if they show, for example, in an app that's geared towards children and the kids accidentally click on it, then you're getting a lot of irrelevant clicks. But there are ways to regulate that. You can choose which app categories you want to show in and which ones you don't. And you can also exclude certain apps specifically from your targets if you find that you're getting a lot of irrelevant traffic from there. So there is ways, to, there are ways to regulate that, but just something to keep in mind. And the display advertising does get you a really great option to kind of have get awareness out there and get in front of people. It kind of garners brand recognition and recall. It isn't typically the best for getting, as I mentioned, a ton of relevant clicks or driving any kind of lead efforts, but it definitely is a great way to just get, get awareness of your brand, have people recognize it and it's great for brand recall as well. And then with esports, esports is a really popular market right now. A lot of people are gaming, a lot of people are online, they're doing live stream gaming. And especially right now with people being at home more often, it's a great way to integrate your brand into a gaming environment. And typically the way that this is done is you have, there's a billboard or a sign within the game where, you know, you work directly with the gaming company to have a billboard or sign with your brand on it in, within the game, have your logo on the field, a brand name on a jersey. If there's a team, you know, if it's a team game where they have the jerseys on, having your brand mentioned verbally in the context of the game. So if it's a, if it's a game where they're, you know, sh it's a shopping you know, or they're shopping for something or they're talking through, you know, a, something that they're trying to get for their team, they can potentially mention your brand as you know, a sponsor or something like that within the game. And then, you know, some companies are teaming up with esports to create ads, uh, showing their brand product or service, and it can be part of, you know, that world and how like you can work together. And, you know, some, sometimes too, it can be that there's an ad you know, at the beginning of a, a game, when you open it up, they have, you know, kind of like a commercial type thing at the beginning, and that could be a part of it too. So there's many ways to work your brand into these types of gaming platforms. And on the next slide, I have a couple of, of visual examples of both app ads and esports ads, just to give you an idea of kind of what that would look like if it's hard to visualize. So as you can see on the left are the kind of esports ones. So in that top one, you can see across the back, it says your ad here. So that's one place where you, where you could get an ad placement. You could work directly with the gaming vendor, get your ad um, on that little side uh, wall there of the game. And then in the bottom one, you can see there's Pepsi banners hanging all over the arena of this sporting event on this gaming platform. So that's, those are just two examples of ways you can get your ads integrated. So, and like on the, on the front of the front of the jersey, sometimes you can see brand names as well. And then on the right is in-app advertising. And so essentially on the top is what you would see if you ran the ads in-app, as we were mentioning. So if you're playing a game and the ad shows up mid-game and kind of pauses your game for a second, those are the types of ads that you'd see there. And then on the bottom is display, what we would consider display ads within the apps. And so as you can see on the very right hand side, you can see that little bottom ad that shows up. And then there are the occasions where they will show up kind of in feed or in um, in in the app. It's like mid app um, as well. So just some examples there so you can to help visualize what those look like. And then as far as targeting options, these are pretty standard across all of these types of platforms. They will vary a little bit depending on, you know, what you're looking at. 
typically the audiences, especially for the esports area, um, are going to be more of that millennial and Gen Z age ranges. However, uh, some of the product targeting in some of those retail platforms might be a little bit different, but typically you're going to see um, the younger audiences on those gaming and app platforms more often. And um, then retargeting would show the ads to anyone who has clicked the ad, visited your website, and not taken an action or has completed a specific action, um, but you want to get in front of them with a new offering of some kind. The, uh, programmatic platforms are really great for this because they have a lot of options for you as far as retargeting. You can upload lists of customers or prospects. You can upload, you can upload um, any first party data really that you've collected. You can target website visitors. So people have pre previously visited your site but have not taken an action. You can also retarget to people who have downloaded an app or who, if you have a brick and mortar store, people who have visited your brick and mortar store and you want to run an ad targeting them. So many options there. Uh, Geo-targeting. So again, this is pretty standard across all the platforms. You can typically target by any specific set of you know, cities, countries, zip codes, things like that. There are some other options with geo-targeting um, in the programmatic space as well, having the option for geofencing and things like that, where you can target within a specific radius of a brick and mortar location if you want to, um, and more specifically. And then the device targeting, so offering an opportunity to advertise on specific devices or types of devices. So for mobile, Android versus Apple, both desktop gaming consoles, all of these types of platforms are offered as device targeting in most of these areas. And then, so for key benefits, on all of these platforms, you're basically getting a, an untapped audience with uh, more people using, uh, you know, online gaming, esports, app platforms, really great audiences and becoming one of the most valuable audiences just due to the age, interest, and their propensity to buy. So um, you're getting a really untapped audience on that side of, you know, a young, kind of a young age range that may not be as accessible on some of the other platforms. And then especially with programmatic as well, you're, you can just expand that audience beyond anything, um, you know, that you can get on any other platform. Also the, all of the ad platforms will drive an unprecedented amount of brand awareness. So getting your ads out there and in front of the audience in a way that isn't disruptive, but memorable is super key. Just getting yourself out there, creating that brand recognition and recall and, having people come to your site, even if they don't buy right away, they get to your site, they become familiar with your brand, and they're more likely to come back and buy in the future. And typically the ad opportunities for these platforms are let, are fairly inexpensive um, compared to some of the other options out there. So for example, with app or in-game um, are much easier than producing a commercial, for example. And they reach the same audience in an effective way and provide a much better overall return on ad spend. And you'll find that programmatic vendors typically, especially cost-wise, are very cost-efficient, but also um, are, you know, some of, some of them do have a minimum spend and some of them do have, you know, some management fees and things like that. But there are platforms out there that are fairly inexpensive and very efficient with their spend, even if they're a little bit more expensive on the side of management fees. Typically the cost for the ad, the ads to show themselves are much lower and much more efficient because there's a much bigger audience there. And so you'll see a much better uh, overall return. And in all of these areas, you'll, you know, you're just, you're getting a much larger reach. It's an untapped audience in all of these situations and um, you know, people that aren't necessarily browsing online, but they're gaming, they're spending time in apps, they're on these retail platforms shopping, but they may not necessarily be doing direct searches for your product or brand. And then as far as where to access and purchase these ad placements, so programmatic, um, they're accessible in a few different ways. There are many individual companies that provide programmatic services and access to their DSPs, both self-service and managed options at most, most of the companies. Some offer, you know, only managed. Um, so they manage the ads for you. Uh, some have, a, but most of them have self-serve options 
um, that are a little bit cheaper. And sometimes they also have a partnership with a specific software integration or an agency that will give them access through that avenue. So sometimes these companies will partner with a specific agency or a specific product um, or software platform, and you'll be able to access their DSP through that platform if you purchase um, that platform or work with a specific agency. And they do typically require access um, through a provider, as we mentioned before. They are accessible occasionally on their own, the DSPs, but they're not as openly accessible. And it's just easier to work through a provider because they can kind of help you set everything up and have a much more f- familiar view of what's what's accessible and what's available, the different ad types, all of that. And it just is easier overall to work with a provider typically. And then um, on the retail platforms, you're, they're completely accessible to everyone. So um, you can literally go online and just search like, for example, Walmart ad platform, and it'll give you a link. You can sign up, create an account, no minimum spend, completely self-service, and the opportunity for full control over what's being shown, how much is being spent, um, opens up an opportunity to promote ads for products, um, but the, they don't have to be sold at the store um, that is hosting the ads, as I mentioned before. So is like on Amazon, you have to be able to sell your product on Amazon in order to run ads for it. So this just opens up kind of a different side of that. And then for apps and esports, you can run app ads through Google ads. So if you already have a Google ads account, this is a really great option if you have an app um, to promote your app and promote downloads on your app. But also just you can just run Google display ads that show up in those mobile app placements as well if you don't want to create those specific in-app ads placements. Uh, that show up during games and uh, those types. And they're just easier to create for the display versions. And also um, the app ads to promote your app are extremely easy to set up and fairly low cost as well. And then for esports, you can do those programmatically. So a lot of the programmatic vendors will have a partnership with those types of platforms through their DSP. So you might be able to show ads uh, in the games if they're like an online game or hosted through a live platform, if the game isn't a live platform or not online, you might have to work directly with the esports company to get a placement within their game or as a partnership to create an ad of how the game and the product work together. So there's a couple options for all of these areas, but overall these are much uh, cheaper options typically than what you might see in other areas and also just expands your reach Um, beyond what you would get in typically Google and social platforms. Perfect. So in summary, uh, one of the biggest trends we're seeing going into this year, into 2023, is the uh, third-party depreciation by Google. Um, It's something as a paid marketing team, we're definitely keeping track of and and looking for those new options. And so that's where a lot of these different platforms come into play just because they do have those targeting capabilities once those sunset and gives you another option as well as reaching uh, a new untapped market at a lower cost because they're not being used as much as other platforms. And typically Um, with a lot less competition as well, because these mm -hmm. platforms are not you know, they're, they're widely used, but not necessarily in the same industry or, you know, there's so much reach there that the competition is, is low because you just have so many more people to reach. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and so going through the different ones, just a quick summary, programmatic, obviously opening up that large audience targeting um, with really robust targeting and being able to reach people on a multitude of different platforms. Um, and then with retail, Um, being able to use that first party data to target people without having to necessarily sell those products in store um, is a great way to kind of get a low cost reach there and people shopping for your other uh, products other than using Amazon, which seems to be the top one right now um, where a lot of people are going to automatically. There's a lot of good other retail uh, platforms out there um, that can get you similar results at a lower cost. And less and then, competition. <laughs> yes, and less competition. A lot less competition than Amazon. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely, definitely. And then the last one here we have is apps and esports. Um, as Carrie mentioned, it's a really great way to get in front of a younger demographic using these platforms and really work your brand in an organic way on some of those billboards 
or naturally into the app. So it creates a nice flow and uh, increases brand recognition and recall. Okay. Perfect. So we'll be getting into a Q&A real quick. Before we do, I'd like to mention um, our March webinar coming up on Google Analytics 4. So um, some insights and best practices on how to integrate that in with your business. Our SEO team will be going over that. Um, so the sign up for that will be available soon. And that is something that Google will be requiring companies to do here in the fairly near future. So definitely something to tune into and see how to transition that um, as it will be a requirement here in the next probably year, if not sooner. Perfect. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, Carrie, one question um, I get asked sometimes when it comes to programmatic advertising is kind of how does it differentiate from Google Display ads. So kind of what are your thoughts on the differences there between Google Display and using programmatic advertising? Sure. Yeah. So that's a great question. Google Display is a really great way to advertise and it's really easy because you host it right through the Google platform. And so if you're running search ads already, it's a really easy way to just, you know, run some image ads as well. However, with programmatic, you not only are opening up, so Google on their display network, they have a set network of sites that they show on, and it's only going to show on the, that network of sites that Google is working with. With a programmatic vendor, you have access to infinitely more sites because these programmatic vendors on their DSPs have access to a multitude of sites out, outside the Google network. So they have access to you know, sites outside the Google network. They've got sites from like the Yahoo network. So they pull from all of the sites um, around the internet. And they also offer a lot of times different types of ad formats. So on Google, you're fairly limited to certain ad sizes or certain image sizes, and you can't really run a lot of um, animated type ads. And there's just a lot more options for ad types on programmatic as well, which just kind of opens up the opportunity there. Um, and then as, as we mentioned, just kind of, um, some of those restricted categories. I know Google has started kind of restricting with, especially with housing and financial. So like if you're, you know, running ads for, you know, if you're a loan company and you want to get people to sign up for a loan with your business, Google has a lot of restrictions around that in the recent years. And so these programmatic vendors don't have those types of restrictions because they're their kind of their own separate entity and are a lot less restricted in those areas. And so we've had clients, especially in the financial and housing spaces who have kind of adapt, adopted this programmatic strategy to get around some of those um, age restrictions and you know, some of the, the financial restrictions that Google has in place. Perfect. And another question is, do you feel that a lot of the platforms we've gone over today are good uh, maybe workarounds for the third-party depreciation coming up from Google next year? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think especially with the programmatic vendors, they have access to third-party data that you know is not available through other, other vendors and not through Google either. And I think to you know the, the platforms like the retail platforms, not only are you reaching um, you know an audience that you may not be able to reach because of this third-party cookie depreciation, but also, you know, you're reaching people who are shopping on their websites and going directly to their site. And then you just get kind of a, you know, an ad placement on their site for your product that you, know, you may not be, have reached that customer otherwise because of this third-party cookie depreciation. And also just because they may not be, um, you know, using the other platforms um, as well. Perfect. Well, I don't see any other questions in the chat here, so we'll wrap it up today. Um, this recording, like we had mentioned, will be sent out afterwards. If anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out and uh, be sure to tune in next month again for our webinar on Google Analytics 4. Awesome. Thank you, everyone.